Hello and welcome to uh, another tutorial on Linux shell scripting. I'm going to assume that you've seen part one of this uh, Linux tutorial and then what we're going to cover today is slightly more advanced. What I'm going to cover first is uh, just uh, how to run uh, an existing executable from a shell script. So what I have here is the no input lex is a file I've compiled to executable previously and then what we're going to do is go to the command prompt and go into that directory and uh, cd no inputs and then the file is called no input dot lex and so to run that from the command line I just type no input dot lex and then hit enter so dot slash no input dot lex and when it runs it's just program ran correctly so just uh, for those of you who are curious the contents of that are as follows. Uh, it's a program that just writes a string to screen and then exits. So and the way that I compiled that was g4tran no input at f90 dash o and then that lex. So that's how I compiled the program and it's just an example that I'm using today to demonstrate uh, what shell scripts can do. So in, uh, if I wanted to run that simple program from within a shell script, all I would have to do uh, is just put this command, the dot slash that I ran previously into a file and then run it. So I'm going to do cat example run program. So the contents of this uh, shell script are very simple. And then the way that I run it is just bash example run program. So this should be familiar from the previous tutorial. All it did was execute the file, and then the file spits out uh, whatever data is going to run. So I just use the bash command and run the shell script. Next up, we'll look at a slightly more interesting program. If you're uh, interested in having some input, so I'm going to change directories into a uh, uh, CD and then dot dot to go back up and then into another directory called multiple inputs. So the contents of this directory is another Fortran program that I wrote. The executable I've called multiple inputs dot lex and when I run that uh, it's gonna read this input file here called read from me dot input and we'll just see what that says first. So the contents of this read from me input are three numbers two four and one the way that I've written the Fortran program, it's going to take that first number and use that to specify how many more variables it should be looking for. So in this case, there are two more variables and then the numbers 4 and 1. And so when I run this program, multiple inputs, so it's dot slash multiple inputs, I get back 4 and 1. So the contents of that Fortran program were... Uh, just to open up a file called read from me dot input and then read how many arguments there are and then for that number of arguments read the input and write to screen so again a simple program the point of this program is to read from a file and, and then do something with that input so we're going to be using that in a shell script here this shell script that I've written is going to basically create that input file so if we switch back here and we'll say that we're going to remove the read from the input and now the program the Fortran file would not be able to run because of the missing input file so it's going to complain that there's a uh, it's looking for a file which doesn't exist and so it it wasn't able to read it so if I do ls here I've just got the executable and so I'm gonna use a shell script to create that input file and so we're gonna say let's clear out example input file. So this shell script, what it's going to do is uh, first we're going to take a verb and again just to review this is a, a bash file and bash lives in the bin directory. The next line here is a uh, comment specifying the author and when the file was created, who to complain to and where to send questions. Next line is uh, a string and we're going to set that string equal to a variable and the variable is named input file another numeric variable called numargs is going to be set equal to 2 and so with that 
with those two variables, we'll put those the, the number of arguments in a input file, and then we're going to echo 4 and 1 as values into the input file. You notice here that this is a single caret. The single caret is just directing this string into this file. The difference with the double caret is that the double caret appends the, the data into the output file, which, and then the, the double carets here uh, append new information. So this first one created the input file, and if, it, if the input file had already existed, it would have overwritten it with uh, the single string here. So when these three commands are done, we'll get back uh, a text file with three values in it, 2, 4, and 1. The next line is going to alert the user that the shell script has created the input file and is going to start the, the program. And then the last line here is just to run the executable. So I'm going to use the up arrow key and then bash. And I'm going to hit enter. And then what we get from this was that the script created the, fi created the input file, started the program, and then the, the program runs and the values are displayed on screen from the Fortran program. The next uh, thing that I want to show you is slightly more complicated. The idea here is that previously what we were doing was just creating a single input file and then running that program once. We can combine that with a for loop in a shell script to uh, iterate over a set of values. And that's what I'm going to do next. I'll clear out and we'll see what the contents of the parameter sweep are. All right. So this is our, our large, largest uh, shell script so far. It's got quite a few lines. Again, we've got the bin bash and then the author name, uh, attribution, and a single line comment. Now, just as the, the last one set the uh, string here for the input file, we've done that again, and the number of arguments is going to remain two. The difference here is we're going to set up a for loop with a variable called angle. And that angle is going to iterate over a set of values from 0 to 30 in step size 10. So this may not work in all versions of bash, but after, I think, 3, uh, this sequence is available here. So you can actually uh, step from one value to another in step sizes other than 1. So the range of values in this case would be 0, 10, 20, and 30. So this angle value, angle variable, is going to be used with four different values. All right, just keep that in head, in your head. And then the next step inside the for loop, so for each of those values of angle, we're going to make a directory, mkdir, called parameter sweep angle, and then the dollar sign angle. So here the word angle is just part of the folder name, but then dollar sign angle gets evaluated as each of these values. So the first directory that we should expect to see would be called parameter sweep angle 0, and then parameter sweep angle 10, 20, and 30, and so on. What we do with that directory is we go into it using CD. So this would be the exact same CD that you're using in, termi in, the, sh in, the, uh, in the terminal, but in this case we're going to use it inside of a shell script. So we can use any of the commands that we use in the terminal in a shell script. We're going to change directories into the, the directory that we just created here. And then we're going to copy that executable that was in the original directory. So where I am now, if I type ls, there's a, a file called multiple inputs.lex. And when we go into a subdirectory, we're going to have to copy it from the parent directory. So that's what the CP is here. Just as with the previous script that we looked at, we're going to echo the number of arguments, in this case 2, and then 4. But now we're going to change that last one from 0 to 10 to 20 to 30. So this is the, the variable that we're sweeping over. So this is why it's called a parameter sweep. We're running the single uh, Fortran executable with a single input file, but we're making multiple input files for multiple runs of the executable. And then again, we'll just alert the user that we're running the program and then actually execute it in the local directory. So each of these uh, executables is going to be copied and then run in its own directory. And this is done 
so that the output from one executable doesn't conflict with any of the other uh, parameter sweep uh, instances. In, in this specific case, we're writing to screen, so there won't be any conflicts, but uh, if you're doing any research or something where you actually are manipulating data, you'll usually be having some specific output that you're going to have from an executable. So to get down to uh, actually running it, we're just going to say bash. And now recall, when we did ls, we just had a set of shell scripts, a Fortran file, an executable, and an input. So when I run this, I expect to get back uh, some alerts saying that some programs were the script is has been creating the input file, and then we're going to run the program, and then we're going to run the program, and each time we expect to get the number 4, and then either 0, 10, 20, or 30 back. So I'm going to hit enter here, and that's exactly what I get. You'll notice it was pretty quick because the program doesn't do very much computationally speaking. This time when I have ls, I, I see that there are four new folders that are created. Uh, just as we were looking to do here with this angle which we're sweeping from 0 to 30. So that's that's pretty nice and the contents of each of those directories we can see for example by typing ls in the folder name and it's just the the input file which was created uh, by the shell script that was written by the shell script and then this executable was copied down from the parent directory. Alright now the the script that we just ran was a serial program in that all the things were executed sequentially and if we're going to be running a large set of these like let's say three in this case we can run them in parallel so uh, the this idea is distinct from running the uh, the input files writing the input files so I'm going to demonstrate this idea of parallelism with the, the original no input uh, version of the Fortran program that I wrote. So we're going to switch directories back to no inputs. I'm going to do ls. So in this directory I've created a, a, a shell script called parallel subshells. So what this script does, again we've got bin bash and then the author name, uh, but the first interesting thing here is these parentheses. These parentheses denote a subshell. A subshell is basically the the script is going to spawn a sub uh, instance of itself and so all of these commands will be executed in their own little sh subshell. And then the and says while you're doing this and do this. So we've got another subshell here and another subshell. So these ands are just going to allow these uh, subshells to be executed simultaneously and what I've done in order to demonstrate that this is actually running in parallel is to introduce the sleep so it's gonna this the first subshell here is gonna echo starting one so it's gonna print that to screen and then sleep for three seconds so it's gonna pause there's gonna be a slight delay and then it's gonna run the program and then echo from one so it's gonna denote that at the after the program ran that it finished from one. The next subshell is going to take uh, a similar uh, approach, but it's going to say it's starting from subshell two, sleep for two seconds, and then run the program, and then say I've, I've finished from two. Lastly, we've got subshell three, doing what, almost what you'd expect here. We've got a pattern of uh, starting th one, two, and three subshells, and sleeping for three, two, and one seconds. If this were to run in serial, it would take a total of 6 seconds, since that's 3 plus 2 plus 1 for the sleep, and the, the actual program run doesn't take any time, basically. So the total time you would expect in serial would be 6 seconds, but when we actually run this, we'll see that it takes a total of, six, of 3 seconds. And that's because all three of these were initialized at the, er, uh, initiated at the same time, and then we're run in parallel. So the total runtime will be three seconds. Now they've started, and now each of them waited either three, two, or one seconds, and then they finished. And then you can see that order of them finishing. The subshell one had to wait the least amount of time, one second, and so it finished first. This was the reason that I put in the delay of different times. 
So, so all three start at the same time, but subshell three finished first because it had the least amount of sleep time, and then the pause on subshell one was the longest and it ended last. So, and then each of these programs were just was just outputting program ran correctly. So here we can see that we've executed uh, a parallel set of subshells. This would be useful in our previous previous example, instead of running all the programs sequentially, and maybe they all take a long time, and if you have access to multiple CPUs, so you can uh, execute it in parallel and save yourself uh, quite a bit of time. Now the next idea is that if you notice back on our, 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 our nice little shell script here, you'll notice almost that these look like they're primed for a, a for loop, right? Because you want to iterate the loop from 1, 2, 3, and then uh, output that code. Uh, instead of manually typing all of this in all the time, is just iterate a for loop to write this code for you. And that's what the idea here is, that you can, if I'm going to just have those three parallel loops, my CPU number, I'll set the variable called CPU, equal to either 1, 2, or 3. Now this gets a little bit complicated because what the idea that I want to accomplish is I'm going to actually uh, let's do okay, example, all right, parallel subshells. So the idea is instead of writing the code and just copy pasting it and editing it and, and doing all that, I can have a code, a, sh a, a script in this case, that writes another script. So the, this is a pretty powerful idea. I mean, this is the idea that code can write code. So we've got a, sh a, sub, a, a script which is going to write code to a file called temp.sh. So right now that doesn't exist. There's no temp.sh here. And then what it's going to do is put this string into a new shell script called temp.sh, and it's going to put that uh, those multiple lines into a file, and then it's going to run those files, run that file that it created. So this shell script is going to create a shell script and then run the shell script. So if I do uh, bash. We, what we should expect to happen is that this temp will be created and then it's going to be run and we'll see the same parallel run that we saw before. So, let's see. So if we do ls again, now we've got this temp.sh and if we look at that, yeah, so now these were the lines that were written to the file from this other shell script. The reason this would be useful, not so much in the case of three CPUs, but if you had a hundred or a thousand CPUs, you wouldn't want to write this line over and over a thousand times. And so you can put, you can write code from within a shell script and then run that code. So these are the main ideas. We've got a uh, code that writes code. We've got parallel shell subscripts or subshells, and then we have a parameter sweep. And this was all based on the idea that you could have input files written from within a shell script. So, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck shell scripting.